Um, in here, it's a new function, it's a, it's a quadratic, right? So it's p of x, the parabola, um, but I might as well sum it. It's going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. And I'm doing that with respect to x. Okay. All right. Now, let's go ahead and let's just integrate this, okay? Because it's not that hard to integrate. I'll start my square brackets. ax squared turns into? Good. bx turns into? Good. And we just slap an x on the c, okay? And I've got my lower and upper bounds, okay? So far, so good. Okay, now we can actually evaluate this and we should expect some stuff to get simple for us because of um, the nature of these boundaries and also the, um, that bx squared, that's going to be used for us in a second. So let's just evaluate upper and lower bounds, right? First, you've got a h cubed on 3, b h squared on 2, c h. Okay, then I should get rid of this minus. Now just watch out for your negatives here, okay? Because I'm subbing in minus h, but that minus is going to appear a couple of times, so be careful that you don't miss it. This first one is going to be minus h cubed. This is going to cancel out because x squared maybe just disappear. Then minus c, sorry, h, h, c, h on the end. Happy so far? Is that okay? Now, you can see some stuff cancels, right? Uh, number one, this bh squared on 2 minus bh squared on 2, it goes, right? And then secondly, you've got minus and then the double negative, and minus and the double negative again, okay? So here's what I now have. Approximately equal to 2ah cubed on 3 plus 2ch by the looks of it. Okay, is that all right? So far, so good. Okay. Now you look at that and you're like, well, okay, that's it's it's kind of simpler, right? But remember how how the trapezoidal rule? Why was it useful to us? Okay, um, as opposed to integration. Um, sorry, this line here. If you're going to integrate, you need to know what the primitive is, right? Um, and we call that capital F, okay? But the advantage of trapezoidal rule was, you didn't need to know what the primitive was, you just needed to know the original function, and you could say, well, it's going to be, okay, how's your memory? What is, um, what's, let's just do the basic form of trapezoidal rule with just one trapezium. How do I start? H on two. H on two, good. Times what? It was the first plus two times the middle, times the last one. Yeah, that's right. Now, uh, yeah, we're ten times many. So, um, my first one would be just lowercase f of a, right? Then you've got um, double all these ones in the middle, however many you have, okay? Um, and then you've got your last one, okay? So the reason why this is advantageous is because I don't need to know capital F. Don't need to know the primitive. I just need to know the original function, okay? Now here, in this case, I've got to be able to get this in terms of, just like the trapezoidal rule, my original function. My, um, uh, in this case, it's p, not f. Okay? So how can I get this in terms of this? Hmm. Uh, and specifically, this and its, its function values. Okay? Well, what are the function values? Like, what are this distance and this distance and this distance actually equal to? How would you work them out? Yeah, well, hold on. You'd sub what into what? P, what am I going to sub in? P minus H. Yeah, good. I'm going to take these values and I'm going to sub it into P, right? Okay, so let's just go ahead and work those out. Um, where am I going to say? So I'll do it over here. So here's the first value, right? Fun function value, rather. P of minus H. What's going to happen here? The minus is going to disappear, so I'll get A H squared minus B H plus C. Is that okay? What's the middle function value? Should be easy. It's just a constant. And the last function value along is going to be just like that with one difference, the plus in the middle. Right? Okay, so here's my question. Um, just like with, you know, some products of roots, right? And they're like, oh, you know, you know what these two are. Can you work out stuff like this? Okay? So your job was find a way to build this out of these two. Okay? 
okay, you, you just did some sort of um, manipulation so you can see the connection. So my question is, if these are the build, not a building blocks, these are my building blocks. These are my function values, okay? How do I put them together in such a way that I'll end here? Mm. Now, have a look. You've got h cubed and, um, and h's, right? h cubes and h, hold on, uh, is this right? Yeah, okay, h cubes and h's. Now, I don't have any h cubes in my building blocks, okay? So can anyone suggest something that I could do which would sort of get me closer? I can, I've got a common factor here, right? Because I've got h here and h there, right? So I'm going to take out a factor of h. Now while I'm at it, I'm also going to take out a factor of a third because I don't like fractions because I'm discriminatory like that. So what do I get? I've got 2a h squared, yeah? Plus what? Because I've taken out 3, this is going to multiply. So, good. Okay. So now I don't have h cubed anymore. This is looking a little friendlier. I've got a h squared. That's <laughs> promising. Okay. But the only way that I can get an a h squared in here is by introducing one of these, right? A b h. But I have no h's here. So how do I get rid of an, an h? I can add them, right? Because those signs are opposite. Yeah. So if I do p of minus h plus p of h, what am I going to get? Uh, well, these two double, these two cancel, and then these two double. That looks promising, doesn't it? It's pretty darn close, actually. Uh, if I rewrite this a little bit, we should be almost there, right? 2ah squared plus 2c. That's what I know. That's what I know. But I've got 6c here, right? So there's 4 hanging over on the end. But can you see where I get the 4 from? Where do I get the 4c from? It's just going to come from... This guy, right? Okay, so I am running out of room. I'm gonna have to rub this off, but you can keep referring to your own one. Okay, I'm now gonna get rid of all of these and replace them with just the function values that I know about, okay? So it's going to be approximately equal to h on three, right? Times this thing, what was that? It's these two function values together. And then, in order to get this 4c, right, you must know where that comes from, okay, because this is the difference between the two rules. Um, I add 4 of these, right? 4 times p naught. Close bracket. Okay? Now, what is this? This is, um, this comes from here. Okay? Yes. So, I've got everything in terms of p's here, right? But my original question is about f, it's about that log x function, right? So I'm going to translate everything back to, instead of P's, I want F's, okay? Now, unfortunately, I had to get rid of my diagram, but you've got yours right there, right? So what did P minus, uh, minus H, what does P of H and P of 0, what do they correspond to, okay? This is my area, right? It's approximately equal to that H on 3. Now, what's H? H. In our case, it was we, we took that, that interval and we halved it, right? So instead of H... I'm going to put in, well, what is that height? It's going to be the distance between them, b minus a, and then I divide by 2, right? Because that's how I, how many intervals I divided into. Okay? So there's my h on 3, I've got that. p of minus h, what was that? That was my first function value. Where did I get it from? It's, it's f of a, right? It's the left value. Okay? p of h is my right hand value, the last one, right? So that's f of b. Okay? And then I got four lots of, now what was the middle value? It was taking the average, right? F of a plus b on two. Close bracket. Okay, yeah. Do we need to know this der derivation? Do you need to know it? Like, do we just need to know it? Yes. Like, oh, we know it. You do need to know it. I mean, do you need, will you need to produce it? I severely doubt that, okay? But it's in, number one, it's in the program. Number two, it isn't tagged in one of those things that says not accessible. Like when we learn limits and calculus and all that kind of thing, a lot of those things you didn't have to worry about, you had to learn it. But this, I think, is fair game, okay? Which is why I'm going through it so much detail. Okay, now just do one more thing to tidy up. We have a fraction on a fraction here. So that two and that three together become a six. So here's my 
final thing. Uh, put a big square bracket there. I can probably rearrange this and get it in right order, because this is first, last, middle. So I'll go first, middle, and there's four of those. And last, in bracket. Okay, so you may even like to write beneath that. This is first, four times the middle, and last. Okay, now remember I told you how crazily similar Simpson's rule and trapezoidal rule are. Okay, there's a four instead of a two, and well, where did this come from? This is h on three, not h on two. Okay. So the key to remember which one is which is well, why are we dividing by three? It's because of what I did over here. Right? It was actually the integration that, that gave us this new fraction. Okay? Why do we divide trapezoidal rule by two? Why do we divide, divide trapezoidal rule by two? Because it's the area of a trapezium. And no one confuses the area of a trapezium. They're like, is it a third H or is it a half? No one does that because you guys know trapeziums quite well, right? So that's how I would remember and distinguish between. So this is what we call, one more color, this is the basic form of Simpson's rule. Okay. So you maybe want to put a, um, a big box around it. Okay. Yeah, question? Sorry? Yeah, is the other stuff connected to the square brackets? This stuff? The stuff below that box. So this stuff here? It's going to minus a This stuff here? Is that connected to... Oh, uh, yeah, no, sorry. This came from this. Oh, okay. How little attention were you paying when I wrote this down? Oh, right. Don't answer that question. Uh, okay, so that's the basic form. All right? Now, hmm, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Can you please get up and move and stretch? Because I'm going to show you the not basic form. You've been sitting there for a long time. So get up and move. Do something. Any kind of stretching? Sorry? Uh, you can eat, but it does not count as stretching. I'm stretching my mind.